whatever traumas, whatever issues you had to go on in your life. But how did you get like to the point today where you're like, you kind of know the steps you need to take, like what brought you to that? Was it just like, you just knew you needed healing? Like you were tired of being, you were sick and tired of being yeah. sick and tired kind of thing. Yeah, because I was just sad all the time. Yeah. And I, like after crying, like so many times you get tired of crying. Like after not being able to sleep, you get tired of not being able to sleep. Like you want to be able to function. Yeah. I got tired of not being able to function. Like I wanted to be like myself. Like I knew I was getting bad because I was doing terrible in school. Like, and I never do terrible in school. And I was just like, this isn't me. Like, I don't even recognize myself. So I wanted to be better. I wanted to be my old self again. That's the gist of it, what you said. Do you want me to go first? No. Does it help you out if I go first? No. They'll cut it up and probably put it. Anyway, so what made you feel comfortable enough to be like, I know I can talk to Vargas about this? Like, what was that thing? Like, I don't know. Like, again, honored. Like, honored to be a part of your, your journey. Honored to have been there for your graduation this year. You graduated high school and going to college in the fall. But, like, what was that thing? Like, you were like, yeah, I know Vargas. He cool. So July is when you called me. Yeah. And that's because my dad was like, he told me, he was like, I might be going away for a long time. Like, it's not your fault. It's my fault. Um, and like, it was just, I was upset. And I didn't know how to deal with that because like, I just got my dad back. So like, what do you mean? Like, you're leaving again. And like, even when he like first came home, our relationship wasn't like the best because I was like already like 11 when he came home. So it was just kind of hard and that I was going through that, like, yeah, no. whatever. I just didn't know how to come to terms with that. And like, I didn't know who to turn to. It was the middle of summer, yeah. so. But then I didn't realize like how impactful that moment was for you, right? I didn't realize, cause even like a year later for my birthday this year, like you texted me and I cried. I cried because I showed, you know, I showed short, I'm like, yo, look what, look what my baby just texted me. You know, you're like, happy birthday, old head. You know, thank you for being there. You're like another father to me. Yo, I cried. And people are like, why are you crying? I'm like, you wouldn't understand, right? They just wouldn't understand what that felt, what it meant then to me. Because I was like, I just want to see you be the great version of yourself and be the best version of you. And so, yeah, that time was, it was hard for me too because my dad died when I was when I was young. And so you had your dad, he was in your life, he was out and he's coming, he's going to be out again. And wanted to be the total support for you, but not knowing how that looked. So I was scared. Right? I was scared in that moment too. Yeah. I mean, it's not like I know how to deal with it either. Like, it was just, like, I wasn't sleeping. I wasn't really eating. Like, I didn't really know what to do. I would cry all the time. Like, I didn't know how to deal with it. I didn't know how to ask for help. I didn't know how to get help. I didn't know what to say when I wanted to get help. So I was just struggling. And it was, so you helped me during that time? Because in the same time frame, you know, I was going through my divorce. And so I was mad to, like, no one knew. Like, you didn't even know. And you were mad as hell when you found out everything that was I going mean, on. Yeah, it was a year later. So. I, I know. I, I appreciate you. And, you. and I know you love me. And I love you. And, I, and that's, for me, it was, I'm not very open and public about those things sometimes. I like to be protected and guarded. But, like, you helped me to, like, realize, like, yo, I got some issues I got to work through. Still working through those issues, right? I got, you know, I go to therapy. It's like, people look at it like, oh, you go to therapy? You're a strong, big dude. Yo, everyone needs that joint. You just, just want to talk to. No, for real. Cause like when I um, I was going through all that, I didn't tell any of my teachers. I didn't tell anyone that knew me, like any of my friends. I didn't tell them. I didn't talk to my aunts. And then when I finally told them, they were like, "Why didn't you tell us? How was I supposed to tell you that? Yeah. How was I supposed to tell you that I couldn't sleep and I couldn't eat and I was sad all the time? When you're used to seeing me all happy and like laughing all the time, like how you go from that to that and explain that? I think. When it comes to like even some of your classmates, some of our students that we know personally, the reason why they don't reach out for help or they feel like they can't is because of fear. The fear of judgment, the fear of rejection. Like I have a fear of rejection. I have a fear. I have all them fears. Abandonment. I have abandonment issues. Facts. This is a real thing, right? Where you don't want to feel like some like someone like you be like, man, Vargas is cool. That's that dude. I really, you know, I love him and I know he got my back. But then if I abandon you, it's more of a heartache from someone that you feel like you connect trust, with and yeah. trust than anything else and so that causes you not to want to reach out to people and i think like even with students they're like well i got this i got this i'm like you don't and it's okay to not have it right like my it's fiance, also yeah. like 
a Hispanic thing definitely. or like a, just a POC thing, like it's pride. Oh, definitely. Like you, like you, you're prideful. You, you don't want to ask for help yep. because you have that idea. I could do it by myself. I don't yep. need any help. And like, even with me, like my brother, we're the same way. Like it really took me to be at rock bottom and like, damn, I'm, I really don't have anyone to, I need help. Like I was just like, I, I can't fix this by myself. It's, you get to that point where it's just like, not a why me thing, but sometimes it feels like it is. Like why I have to go through that? So even seeing how, so why you have to go through that? Because it's gonna help me. Like how do I be, like from your perspective, how can I be a better father to my daughters who I don't see as frequently as I used to, right? That I'd wake up in the morning and they're jumping on top of me to now like they can't do that. That's the same. That's the like, so how, yeah. so how so how do, how do I how can I work through that? Like you you're experiencing it from the daughter side. I'm experiencing it from the father side. So we both have a disconnect. You have the father's connect. I have the child disconnect. So how do how do I how do you think? Like if your dad was around, like how would you what would you want to hear him say, or what would you want him to do, or if you could? I mean I don't know. Um, well, I mean like show up for things, like be there for big things, even small things, like things like that. Small things matter. Yeah. Whether it be you show up randomly, you take her to her favorite breakfast place, even telling her you're proud. Like people like like me or like in our community, they don't hear that enough. They don't hear that don't I'm affirmed. proud of you. Yeah. They don't hear that you're doing good. You're doing great. Like they need things like that. We need things like that. I just I'll tell you this now. I know you know this. Know this for sure for me. I'll be there for your moments whatever it looks like. You need, you need someone just to be there to cheer you on and root you on? I know you got your mom and your brother. I'll be there for you. And I'm not, I'm not taking the place of your dad. Well, never. That's his honor. But still want to be able to, because again, you've helped me so much. You, know, you just gave me insight right now on how to really affect my daughters and love them. But I'll be there for your big moments, whatever it looks like. Even if it's like, yeah, I just need support for this project. Can you come through? I'll be there for you, homie. For real. Got you. When I was little, I was very much a daddy's girl. Um, I would go everywhere with my dad, just always on top of my dad, because that's just, that's how we were. When it got confirmed that, you know, he got taken, um, I just cried. I was like devastated. But my dad was out there. He was somewhere. And it's like, I couldn't see him. I couldn't hug him. I couldn't anything. And it was hard because it's just, I didn't know how to help myself. I didn't know whether I was sad, angry. So I, I would say it was extremely hard to get past that. Now I can definitely say I'm better. I'm not 100% and I probably won't be for a while, but that's okay. Um, there's some days where like, you know, I'm good. I feel motivated to do things, but then there's days where I'm sad and I let a few tears fall. Um, and I don't want to do anything. I just want to stay in my bed. And I also know that's okay. So you have to find something that'll make you happy. And on those bad days, try to find the power to engage in those things. Because everyone heals different. Everyone has their own way of dealing with things, their own journey even. There's no blueprint to healing. It's your journey, your way of finding how you heal.